On June 3, 2016, a train carrying 94 tank cars of oil derailed in the town of Mosier in the Columbia River Gorge. A total of 16 tank cars derailed, resulting in a release of oil into both the soil and the water, and a fire that started in one car and spread to two more cars as well as nearby vegetation, causing a small wildland fire. The incident required the combined efforts of local, tribal, state, federal, and private sector response resources, including significant support from the state of Washington. Luckily, the equipment and relevant training that had been provided from the passage of 3225 was available and indeed helpful in securing and containing the area following the Mosher derailment. I went to Mosher shortly after the derailment and heard two things over and over again. First, that we were extremely lucky that day, due to weather, a lack of wind, and the location of the derailment, that the disaster in Mosher was not worse and that no one was injured. Two, that Washington had a much better and stronger system of reporting, planning, and training that we in Oregon should look to as an example. In the 2017 session, I jumped back into this issue knowing that we must be prepared for when, not if, there will be another oil train derailment in our state. House Bill 2131 was based on that Washington model by using the state authority under the Oil Protection Act statutes. And while that bill didn't pass, much of the work, much of that work is reflected in the bill before you today, House Bill 2209, that will establish a consistent West Coast policy for oil spill prevention, planning, and response, and that will make our communities safer. My co-carrier will speak to more details of today's bill. I am pleased with the result and would like to highlight a few of my favorite parts. House Bill 2209 requires railroads that transport high hazard materials to create and submit safety and environmental response plans. The railroads will pay a fee to cover the review and oversight of these plans by the Department of Environmental Quality and the State Fire Marshal. This means that no general fund money will be utilized to cover these safety planning measures. The railroads will pay to cover the risks of their operations. Now, colleagues, as, as many of you have heard as well, many people have asked me, why can't we just ban oil trains altogether? Short answer, federal preemption. It's a thing. But I believe House Bill 2209 encompasses all that we are permitted to do to reclaim some safety and peace of mind for Oregonians. I wish it hadn't taken so long, but I'm quite proud of the final result. And so, after years in the making, I'm thrilled to urge your I vote on House Bill 2209. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Co-carrier, Representative Lewis.